Hi, welcome back to the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make rain from scratch in Photoshop. We're going to use a technique that involves filters and patterns to create this effect. And make sure that you stick around until the very end of the tutorial because I have a ton of Photoshop tips and tricks for you. All right, let's get started. We're going to work with this image here. The image is not important. You can apply this effect to pretty much any image that you like. Before we actually work with this portrait, I'm going to create a new document. And this is the document where the magic is going to happen. This is where we're going to create that rain effect. Create a document that's 1080 by 1080. Press create. And we have our new document. Make sure that you have black and white as your foreground and background colors. Then go into filter, render, fibers. In the Fivers dialog box, you can adjust the variance and strength to get different kinds of fibers, or you can click on the randomize button and get a randomized effect. What I'm going to do is increase the variance all the way up to 64, and the strength, I'll leave it right about 35. So we get this effect that sort of looks like rain already, but of course, we're going to adjust it just a bit more. I'm going to press OK, and that's going to create that effect you see there. Then I'm going to go into Image Adjustment Levels and I'm going to click on the black point and drag it to the right, right about here, and press OK. I'm actually going to zoom in, so I'll select the Zoom tool and click just so that we can see the effect a little bit better. What I'm going to do now is go into Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and I'm going to have an angle of 90, and I'm going to increase the distance until it starts looking a bit more like rain something like that. Then press OK. I'm going to go into the image adjustment levels once again, and I'm going to click and drag on the black point and drag it even more to the right until we start getting that raindrop effect. And this looks pretty good. So I'll press OK. At this point, you can leave the graphic as it is or go into filter, blur, motion blur, and just blur it just a little bit more. It's up to you. That depends on the effect that you're going for. In my case, I'll blur it just a bit more and I'll press OK. What we're going to do now is turn this layer into a seamless pattern. So we need to make sure that we don't have any seams. To remove the seam from this image, what you need to do is let's go into Filter, Other, Offset, and you can offset the image. The horizontal offset really won't make much of a difference. You won't be able to see the seam but the vertical offset will definitely help you see the seam of the image. That's the seam right there. We need to get rid of that. The easiest way to do that is by selecting the clone stamp tool and just clone the seam out. So you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to set a sample source. When you have your sample source, you can just start painting away the seam like so. And now I don't have a seam. What I'm gonna do now is convert the black pixels transparent. To do so, I'm going to go into the Channels panel, and on any one of the channels, I'm going to hold Control, Command on the Mac, and click on the channel thumbnail to load the bright pixels as a selection. Depending on the settings that you use, sometimes when you do this, Photoshop will give you a warning that says that if the selection is less than 50%, the marching ants won't show. Don't worry about it. That's OK. Just press OK. In my case, I can barely see the marching ants in some areas. I'm going to go back into the Layers panel, and I'm going to create a new solid color fill layer and I'll set it to white. I'll press OK and disable my background. So now I just have a layer that contains the white, the raindrops. And I'm going to make that into a pattern by going into Edit, Define Pattern, and I'll call it Rain and press OK. Now I can go back into my working document and I can create a pattern fill layer and by default my rain will be selected. I can increase the scale, click and drag to position the rain and notice that we have a seamless pattern which works great. I'll press OK, then I'll press Ctrl J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate and I'll double click on the pattern layer thumbnail and I'll increase the scale more on this second one. I'll reposition it and maybe even make the scale just a little bit bigger. And I just want to get something over her face just to make it a little nicer. I think that looks good. And I'll press OK. 
I'll select the original one once again. Press Ctrl J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. I'll click on the bottom layer and double click on the layer thumbnail and I'll scale down the effect. And these are the raindrops that are further behind her. Then I'll press OK. I'm going to delete this layer mask from the smallest raindrops because I want to place those raindrops behind her to give the illusion of depth. So what I'm going to do is click on the quick selection tool and click and drag over her face. I'm going to make the brush larger by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to make a selection all around her body and her hair. And then I'll decrease the size of the brush by tapping the left bracket key and hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to deselect from that area. And I'll add this part here. And click on the layer mask icon to create a layer mask. But I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, to create an inverted layer mask, which hides the contents of the selection. And you can see that now those far away raindrops are not affecting my layer. At this point, all we need to do is fine tune the layers to make them more realistic. So I'm going to right click on the layer and rasterize it. That way I can apply filters to that. One of the filters that I'm going to apply is the blur filter, just because these raindrops are further back behind her and I want to mimic some of that depth of field effect that is already found on the image. I'll add a radius of 1.3 and press OK. I'll also press Ctrl T, Command T and the Mac to transform, and I'll click and drag on the corner handles to rotate the raindrops. And I'm gonna click and drag on this center handle to make the image larger. And I'll do the same on the other handle. Then I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes. I'm going to go into this layer, rasterize it as well. So I'll right click and select rasterize. And I'll press Ctrl T, Command T to transform. I'll scale it up and I will also rotate it just a little bit. And I'm rotating it to the opposite direction just to make the raindrops look more realistic. And I'll do the same thing on the top one. Right click, rasterize layer and I'll press Ctrl T, Command T to transform. In this case, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll down on the mouse wheel and click and drag on the corner handle and rotate it and scale it up even more, like so. If you feel like you need more raindrops, you can select one of the layers and press Ctrl J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate and you can move it around just so that it doesn't seem like a duplicate. If it helps, you can press Ctrl T, Command T to transform, right click and select flip horizontal and rotate it so that it matches a little closer to the original raindrops that you had. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select all my raindrops by clicking on the bottom one, holding shift, then clicking on the top one and pressing Ctrl G, Command G on the Mac to put those into a group and I can control them just with one single group. At this point, all you have to do is fine tune the image to make it more realistic. One of the things that you can do is convert your original background into a smart object and go into filter, filter gallery, and use a filter in the artistic group called plastic warp, which will make it seem as there's plastic wrapped around her, but we can use that to sort of simulate water on her. We're gonna just add a little bit of water on her hair, some of her hands, not too much since it won't be too realistic if we add a lot. We just wanna add just a little bit to give the illusion of water. So I'll press OK. Then I'll click on the Smart Objects layer mask and click on the Invert button in the Properties panel to make that a black layer mask to hide the effect. Then with the brush tool, I can paint with white and selectively bring back the effect. I'll make my brush larger by tapping on the right bracket key and I'll just paint over her hair, maybe a little bit on her hand, like so. I don't want too much of that filter effect because it'll start looking fake and I think that works. Also, I'll double click on this icon here to bring up this window which allows me to reduce the opacity of that effect so I can decrease it accordingly until I get something that looks convincing. I'll press OK, and to finalize the effect, I'm going to create a color lookup adjustment layer, 
And the color lookup adjustment layer is simply a filter that allows you to apply different color effects to your images. You can just select one and then use the down arrow key on the keyboard and find one that you like. One of the ones that I could use in this case is the teal orange effect, which I think works well for this image. I could also bring down the opacity if the effect is too strong. The choice is up to you. Obviously, if you spend more time fine tuning the raindrops, you can get a more realistic effect. And these are my results after fine tuning the image for about five more minutes. If you enjoy this tutorial, then you might enjoy my 45 minute compositing tutorial. I'll place a link right below in the description. Don't forget to click on that like button now and let me know in the comments what you learned. And if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any new Photoshop tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.